stand up for the night, Ms. Natasha. Thanks, Brian. So, um, it's nice to be here. I, I just came from work and I gotta go back to work. Um, I've worked in customer service for like seven years, just always on the phones with like random places. And um, like, nor I'm so sick of the job that nowadays whenever I get a person on the phone, like my only goal is to get them off of the phone as quickly as possible. But like the one hang up we have is like people's passwords or like challenge question or pin number, like they can never remember what it was and it like just stalls us right there. And this one lady recently, she calls in and her challenge question was, uh, what is the name of your favorite teacher? And the name of her favorite teacher was Jesus. Oh. <laughs> but she forgot that she put Jesus as her favorite teacher. Kind of like, you know, suck up to the big guy. You might want to remember you did that. But, uh... <laughs> but then this other lady, her question was just, what is your password? And her password was also Jesus. But I didn't like the way she said it. Like, I was like, what's your password? And she goes, Jesus. Like, she was judging me. Like, she could tell I wasn't religious. So I was like, yeah, can you spell that? <laughs> Make sure we're talking about the same guy since I'm so unfamiliar. <laughs> um, the only time I had a job that I liked was when I was a teenager. I worked at a movie theater, and one of the departments I worked in was the box office. And I love box office on the weekends because, like, normally when you interact with groups of drunk people, it's kind of scary. But I had like glass in front of me, so like protection. There's one time this group of like four drunken frat guys comes up, and one of them's like, "Yeah, I want four tickets to Borat at ten o'clock." And I was like, oh, I'm sorry, that's sold out. And he's like, what? No. No, I need to get in Borat. There's four of us at 10 o'clock. We need to get in there. And I was like, dude, I don't think you understand how movies work. Like, we totally want you in there. We want your money, but we can't do it. So instead of, like, picking a different movie or, like, asking his friends what they want to do instead, he looks at me for a second, lifts up his shirt, places his man nipple against the glass <laughs> while holding eye contact, and just goes, is it sold out now? <laughs> It's like, yeah, man, I really appreciate your enthusiasm for cinema, but it's still sold out. And now I gotta find a manager to clean your nipple mark off the glass, so it was good. It was great, though, watching my manager, like, on the other side, like, this is bullshit. I don't make enough money for this. I was all right. Um, I don't know. I, it's, it's okay where I work, but uh, it's kind of trashy, and they, like, told me recently I need to, like, dress nicer which I thought was weird, but like you can wear jeans, but all the jeans I have have like pre-torn like holes in them. I can't buy jeans without that, and like normally they're much bigger. But they told me I need to wear nicer clothes, which helped with my self-confidence, because for a long time I didn't have a reason to shave my legs, so when I was getting ready for work, I just shave a square right here. <laughs> like in this one spot. I don't have to do that anymore, it feels good. Um, so I've been having this weird occurrence lately where people uh, feel it necessary to comment on how small my hands are but they'll tell me like I don't already know. They're like, look at your teeny tiny hands, look at how little those are. I guess my, I'm like, yeah, I know they're my hands. 25 years old, I'm pretty sure I remember being in the womb, like, what the fuck is this? Uh, you keep smoking up there, mom, cool. It's gonna work out for us, it's cool. I'm either getting told, you've got tiny hands or you've got a big ass. Which again, I know, it's my ass. I don't remember that one in the womb though. That'd be weird, right? Can you picture a fat ass fetus? That's <laughs> what I don't know what that'd be like. I'm just picturing my mom, like, talking to the nurse, getting an ultrasound, like, how's my baby, doc? Is she healthy? Is she good? The nurse just doesn't know what to say. She's like, um, the baby got back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I don't know where that came from. It was very unprofessional of me. Um, but yeah, when I'm not, like, at my shitty job, uh, I got, I didn't have TV for a long time, I have TV again, and I'm just, like, addicted to the Food Network. But it's, like, all those shows about, like, cake, where they, like, make, you can name, like, any object in the world, and they would make a cake that looks like that, and it's, like, really good. And what I really like about the shows is every show has, like, a pun in the name. They have to do that for some reason, so they're, like, Ace of Cakes, or Cake Boss, or Cake Me Out to the Ball Game, or Cake Jill and Hall. I don't know what that last show is, but it sounds handsome. <laughs> sounds good. But what I don't like about those shows is they're so good at what they do that the cake looks so authentically like what it's supposed to look like that I can't tell what's food and what's not food, and everything just looks delicious. 
And it's like bleeding into my real life because I've had people like who have had parties and they've had those cakes done and I didn't realize it was cake. And I don't want to go to a friend's baby shower, see an adorable infant in a crib and be like, that cake looks good. And be like, Tasha, that's our baby. Yeah, cut it up. Let's do this right now. So, um, I don't know, I don't know if it's like this in other states, but like, um, I've been out of the closet since I was like 15, but one weird thing that happens when you come out of the closet is everyone talks to you about a gay community. Like, I have no idea what that is. I don't know what that means. Like, if it's a place that I'm supposed to go, or like, it's in my neighborhood, just all the gay people, like, we're in a community. I don't know what that means. I couldn't figure it out until I moved to Sugar House. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I went to my local grocery store, and I was like, hey, guys. Oh, here we all are. Same haircut. <laughs> so, finally found ya. Now, what do we do now? <laughs> we just shop? Okay, this works. Um, there has been an influx of that, though, since I've moved, like, to this area. Um, I recently did a show at Club Jam, which is supposed to be, like, Utah's number one gay bar or whatever. And um, that was a weird show, because the, the bar, it's, like, not even half the size of this room. It's really tiny. And there were, like, 200 just drunken, rowdy homos packed into this tiny space. And I realized that night that I experienced the definition of homophobia because I was terrified of those gay people. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, I don't know what's gonna happen tonight. I might die in my own community. Is that where it's supposed to happen? I still don't get it. Uh, but uh, it's nice though lately, like, um, you know, there's been like a lot of advancements and like equal rights and things like that, especially in this state. People are like going to rallies and signing petitions, and that's great to see because before that, I've seen way too many people thinking that not doing something was the same as doing something in terms of political action. Like, for example, I know people who are like, don't shop at Target because they don't like gay people, or uh, don't eat at Chick fil A because they don't support gay marriage. Like, that doesn't really make sense to me. Like, I'm sorry, I went, I took my girlfriend to Chick-fil-A. I don't care. Like, I would, it sounds really selfish, but I'd rather eat a delicious chicken sandwich than get married. <laughs> like, plus, it's, like, not rational, if you look at it that way, because any corporation, like, you, you'd have to stop shopping everywhere, because every corporation, there's going to be some, like, high up, rich fuck who doesn't have to care about you because we're poor fucks and we just need to keep buying their stuff. So instead, I'm just going to take things into my own hands. My roommate told me I cannot buy Gorilla Pasta anymore because their CEO said something stupid about gay people. No, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the store and just buy like all the Gorilla Pasta. Just buy like all of it and then cook it on up, just eat a ton of it like I'm carb loading for a game or something and just use all that energy to do a ton of gay shit. <laughs> right? Just eat all the pussy. Just, who's going to be... <laughs> Here's the plan, guys. Appetizer, pasta. Entree, pussy. Dessert, equality. Who's with me? <laughs> I'm Natasha Mauer. Thank you very much.